During 2014, Bright Ideas Nottingham brought together a group of volunteers that were mainly of the African Caribbean heritage to explore how heritage sites in Britain reflected and explored their links to slavery. The project was Heritage Lottery funded. We need to have exhibitions and you know, black kids, once black kids start to go to these places and they start to see, OK, we actually did come from somewhere, we're not all, you know, criminals and this and that, because your perception, because if your parents don't teach you, where else are you going to get the information from? And if you're with a bad crowd, they're not going to teach you these things because they're not down with education. You know, slavery, people don't know, but slavery you was not allowed to read. So black people weren't reading for 300 odd years. And it's a stigma now, if you were reading, you know, you want to be white or whatever. Whereas if you got education, you know, like my, my heroes like Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, Harriet Tubman, people like that, they're educated people. We visited a number of places with links to slavery. We visited towns like Bristol and Liverpool and explored how their links to slavery are recognised. We also worked with the University of Nottingham's Global Cotton Connections project. We learned how Derwent Valley Mills, World Heritage Site in Derbyshire, used raw cotton, which had been grown and picked by enslaved Africans. We visited a number of places with links to slavery. We explored how these places told the public about these links. We visited Newstead Abbey near Nottingham. We learned how former owner, Colonel Wildman used profits from his slave plantations in Jamaica to restore and expand Newstead Abbey. Um, I just thought today was great. Um, the fact that the lady Heidi came in the room and spoke to the group and was honest with the group. Uh, she, she did face some tough, challenging questions, but um, you know, from this meeting today, I hope that she um, will stay in contact with us, um, collect some recommendations, some ideas, and uh, take it forward to where, whatever committee group she has to attend here at Newstead Abbey. It was interesting. I thought we might have been getting a little bit more about the slave trade. It's fairly evident that we didn't. The, the guy, I thought, did his job. Obviously, the brief did not include any significant element of connection between Musa Dhabi and slavery. So we got the tour. It wasn't quite what we expected. Hopefully, in dialogue with them, we might be able to change that for the future so that other people can get some benefit, understand what Musa Dhabi is about, how it connects to the slave trade and the cotton industry, so that we're all being educated rather than being miseducated, because so far, that part of history seems to have been completely written out. Well, our job is to try and write that back in, to some extent, and to see where we go from there. But it was useful, it was educational, even though we didn't quite get what we expected when we arrived there this morning, but it was a good day. We visited Hall, the home of William Wilberforce, where we learned about the horrors of slavery and to what extent it still exists in the world today. We're here at the Wilberforce Museum and I've come along with the slave trade legacy. Uh, it's been absolutely brilliant. Brilliant and very thought-provoking. The amount of knowledge that I've now gained is indescribable. And to be fair, I think this is something that we should all do, especially as black people. We need to know our history. We need to know about what happened back then so that we can move forward to present time. Keep it real. Stay blessed. If part of Britain's wealth was built on the back of slavery and so many people profited from that, the acknowledgement that the actual slaves made is so vital because it's like a hidden history. Um, there's very little information about it, really. And it's only ever touched on in schools, which I think is diabolical. I think it should be compulsory for every child from every background to understand where where this has come from. One legacy of children from the slave background is that they have very, very low self-esteem. They think of themselves as nothing. And um, that ought to change. And projects like this may, may, may help bring about that change. While slavery wasn't the only part of black people's lives, it was an important aspect of it. 
and we need to know a little bit more about our, our ancestors, um, how they came about, how they were treated, why they were treated in that way, if at all we can get that information, and for youngsters to actually know and appreciate where others were coming from in order to set the foundation for where they are today. I'm telling you, well, when I was there, basically, I was saying, um, somebody was saying it's for the adults, because, the, you know, it's to adults to understand it. But I, I said at the time that, you know, children um, should know about these things, because, you know, they're the one who's growing up, is going to be the future. So, you know, I believe that we should guide some of this filming to the schools and um, community, church groups or whatever, to, for children in their Sunday school area to um, be aware of all this. Because, as I say, they need to know about a lot of these things and then things can be straight or not be... Some children, when they grow up into teenagers, they can be angry about some of these thing, especially the ethnic part of it. We visited Boughton House, which had archives with many fascinating black history links. The former owners of Boughton House did not have slave plantations and supported the education of black people in Britain. It was good to hear some positive stories and to meet an organisation interested in reflecting their black history connections. In our journey, we learned about the pain and misery of slavery. We too felt pain and misery when we discovered that some places wanted to neglect telling our story. Because there's such pain, there needs to be people, therapists and counselling, but with a, you, you need to understand culturally and be culturally aware and spiritually aware because a lot of black people are very spiritual. So for me, I mean, there's a lot of times where I've thought about, I wonder if I need to go to the therapist about this because this affects every area of my life. When you think about it, slavery is not, even 200 years since emancipation, it's less than, I think it's 170 or something years. And it's a very short time in terms of history itself. So the behaviors that they talk about, these people, they don't behave normal, they don't listen. Can you imagine coming out of that kind of institution and behaving properly? How can you behave properly? You cannot behave as, you know, Whose little box do you fit in when they say you don't behave? Who should you behave like? Because they've not been through slavery, so they wouldn't know. But what's brilliant since, I've been told, after the comments that were made from those trips, they're actually going to influence a World Heritage Site, and so they should, to have that, that connection um, acknowledged and people's ancestors acknowledged for what part they played in that. Um, the other aspect of it is the role of Bright Ideas Nottingham in encouraging people to be more inquisitive, to take more things on board, to ask those awkward questions that no one want to ask and others may not want to answer. So I'm hoping that those people will take responsibility. Don't feel bad about it. The people who their families now are still riding high on the hog should, just should now start pumping some of those monies into helping schools develop programs here and in the Caribbean for African Caribbean, not just Africa, the Indian people who came from India as indentured labor. They came after slavery, but nonetheless, they were still abused because they were dissidents in, Can in, a, in a India who they were throwing into the colonies, wherever, as long as they weren't there to give them any headache, they go to wherever they want. So there are lots of things that need to be done. This is just the beginning. This was our journey, our slave trade legacy's journey. Many of us shed tears of pain on this journey, but it made us strong, sharing the pain, seeking the truth. We became a strong family, the Slave Trade Legacies family. We want to share our story with all people. We don't want the contributions of our ancestors to remain hidden history. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may tread me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Just like the moons and the suns, with the certainty of tides, 
Just like hope spring in I, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like hair I'll rise. Out of the huts of history shame I rise, up from a past that's rooted in pain I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling I bear in the tide, leaving behind the nights of terror and fear I rise. Into a daybreak that is wondrously clear I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Where were you born? Where were you born? Where were you born? Where were you born? Where were you born?